we need to understand that what we have always in the world is Satan and the demons and the watchers. Now in relation to the fact that they have crowns, it says in Isaiah 24, 23, the Lord shall reign out of Zion. Does that mean that the Lord is going to come down to earth in the hill of Zion and reign out of there? No, of course not. It will never happen. How could the Lord of glory that you see in this scene descend to live for a thousand years in Zion in Jerusalem? Do you think that's possible? Do you think it's possible? It's impossible. It's impossible, isn't it? Isn't it? You see, he cannot leave this position of glory because he's gone up there forever. He's got the glory back that he had with his father before the foundation of the world. It was a scene of glory. Now nobody has described that to my knowledge. I don't think Enoch does. But by what we hear and see and read that these prophets have seen, it is such glory that it could never come down to this earth. Now can it? Is this on earth that we're looking at? No. It's heaven. Christ is up there. He's up there because he's giving the revelation from up there to John. It says so in verse 1. And so when it says in Isaiah, the Lord shall reign out of Zion, Zion in in uh, um, Hebrews 12, verses 20 to 24, is heavenly. We have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. We have come to the city of our God. The city of our God is not Jerusalem on earth. The city of our God is heaven. We're there in spirit. We're not going to come back down again to this earthly scene of any Zion. So the Lord shall reign out of Zion and God out of Jerusalem and he shall be glorified before all who are in heaven. That's what it means. So this is the Amen, the faithful Jesus Christ who's speaking in this vision and he planned it long ago. God planned it long ago. So the four, it says, creatures that we then see next in the next verse and around the throne and on each side of the throne are four living creatures. That is a wrong translation. It's in the King James. There are four living beings and there are three manuscripts, the oldest manuscripts that have living beings. One is the Vulgate of the Roman Catholic that they used. Another is the Syriac that they used. And another is the Coptic, which is the Egyptian, that they used. You see, Egypt, Syria, and uh, Ethiopia, also come into the picture, but, but Rome were far earlier than our Protestant King James Version. And they had it right, and the Protestants didn't. Yet the Protestants uh, won't look at the Roman Catholic or the Vulgate or the Apocrypha. And the Apocrypha was in the King James Version until 200 years ago. And it's always been in the Latin Vulgate. Well, so Jesus Christ is going to live and reign forever. But when the Lord shall reign out of Zion, as I mentioned before, it also refers to those with the crowns who are going to live and reign with Christ a thousand years. 
And what that means, we will see in some other lesson. Because there's going to be a, a kind of a living and a reigning. Now, we're going to look at the fact that one is like, like a lion. The other is like an ox. The other is like, with a face like a human being. And the fourth is like a flying eagle. And before we do that, I would like to show you something that has gone on in history and that still continues. We need to understand that what we have always in the world is Satan and the demons and the watchers and so forth aping what God does. They copy it. You get that in Hinduism. If you live, live in India for any length of time, you'll hear different things and you, you'll see they're copying. And I mean, if you really read it, you would know that, which I didn't want to do. I know enough about it. That's enough for me. <laughs> it's too evil. Now, there's this about Babylon, that there was an empire from 745 to 539 BC. And we have a picture in Daniel 7 verse 4 of Babylon, of what it was like. It had eagle wings and the wings were plucked. It lifted up, it was made to stand on its feet as a man, with a man's heart. Now Nebuchadnezzar is mentioned as a lion. Jeremiah 47 and 25 verse 9. He had wings that had wings in Jeremiah 4.13. The Chaldeans fly like eagles, Jeremiah says. Habakkuk 1.8. Babylonian sculpture of animals is always with lion's bodies, feet of an ox, eagle's wings, and heads of men. Now what do you think of that? Just what we've just read. Now this isn't of God. What Nebuchadnezzar has done. It's not of God. He's made images. Thou shalt not make images, God said in, in Exodus chapter 20. So it's not of God, it's of Satan and it's of demons. They've aped what is in heaven. They ape what is in heaven. They ape the heavenly. Now, in the British Museum, there's a lion eagle creature and it is a common representative of the deity of the Babylonians. Bel is their god, is a lion, and it represented on a cylinder, a cylinder and, and a game board. Now there are a series of weights of the king's standard in the form of these things. Statues that were in Babylon, that were in his temples and in his palaces. Sixty lion statues lined the processional way leading through the famous Ishtar gate in the capital. Ishtar is an idol, is a, is a goddess. And you find these things in all the scriptures. Isaiah, Jeremiah and so forth. You can look it up if you like. To me that is amazing because it's a clear indication that the doctrines of demons that come into our churches seek to draw us away from the Bible truth into something that is not Bible, into something that is concocted by mankind. In relation to the four living creatures, beings is what they are. There are four different understandings that, that are popular. First of all, the rabbis or the Jews, oh, they said, oh, they represent the standards of, of Judah, of Ephraim, of Manasseh and Benjamin, and of Dan and Reuben, 12 tribes with four points of the compass and 
three, three tribes at each point. Four by twelve by three equals twelve. Now the early Christians and Christians today say, oh, it's like the four evangelists. John's the eagle, Luke's the ox, Mark is the lion, and uh, of course there was a man, Matthew's the man. And then there is also this. Some say they represent the four angels that are around the throne, that are God's chief messengers. Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael. And they're mentioned in one Enoch also, and in all those books. Now, I have something else. It kind of came to me. It says that they're full of eyes, front and behind. And this, didn't come, uh, this uh, is also what they say. They see the surrounding, whatever point he looks at. Now, I'm going to say, it concerns the presence of Christ and the presence of Christ in the believers who are kings and priests. Because we notice these four beings with their descriptions are relative to the person of Jesus Christ in what he has done when he came down to this earth. And we read in Ascension of Isaiah how that the Son worshipped and the Holy Spirit worshipped and praised. And of course, some theologians say, well, it really does sound like Jesus Christ. I mean, he is like that. But then they say, but he wouldn't worship. And that beat me for a while too. When I read it, I remember, though I read it in the ascension of Isaiah, it's there. Jesus Christ in heaven praised and worshipped God. Is that any wonder? No, not really. Because it already says this in the book of Hebrews, if you like to go to it. And the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, and it's a very familiar verse that we have actually taught on more than once. And it took me a while to even think of this verse, just shows you how slow you can be. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12. This is Christ speaking. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, that's you and me, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you, says the Lord Jesus. These four beings represent the redeemed of the Lord. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, in the midst of the congregation or the assembly, and these are in heaven, I will praise you. And then we have this, there are two other verses in the book of Sephaniah, and I have often mentioned this in this chapter 3. It says, and it's the Lord speaking, it's a type of the Lord speaking, and he says, I will rejoice over you with singing. And if you go to that chapter and find that verse, you will see that is to do with salvation. That the doctrines of demons that come into our churches seek to draw us away from the Bible truth into something that is not Bible.